Hi, I'm Merlin, and I'll be talking about Theodore Jericho's The Raft of the Medusa. The epitome of death, Jericho's Raft of the Medusa. I first came across Jericho in a painting of him on his deathbed, which has established an immediate and macabre bond between the painting, Jericho, and myself. Jericho's undoubted masterpiece uses a dramatic color scheme with deep reds, blacks, and grays, which plunges you into an evocative and exciting recreation of the event. And after seeing the piece in person for the first time in February, and seeing the sheer scale and the depths of the blacks, makes it quite easy to understand why this is considered a romantic masterpiece. In 1816, a French frigate called the Meduse struck a bank off the coast of Western Africa. As the ship plunged towards the bottom of the ocean, 147 out of the 400 total passengers were forced overboard and onto a makeshift raft. Dozens were pulled into the sea by a storm, and some that rebelled were killed off by officers. With diminishing supplies of food and water, those who were injured were thrown overboard, and the survivors had to resort to cannibalism. After 13 days adrift from shore, the raft was found with only 15 people left alive, two of whom went, wrote a widely read book describing the event, which were then immortalized by Theodore Jericho's brushstrokes. Throughout the Renaissance and Romantic periods, artists went through hours upon hours of extensive research studying the human anatomy to recreate the body perfectly and convincingly. Jericho himself went through two years of preparation to create the Raft of the Medusa. During his preparation for the painting, he pursued extensive research by interviewing two of the survivors and producing many preliminary studies. He even left a severed head to rot on his windowsill for two weeks. To get the exact understanding he needed to create his masterpiece, he visited hospitals and morgues where he could tirelessly study the color, shape, and tone of the decaying flesh. The composition is structured using a classical pyramid structure, with the pyramid on the left starting from the mast and having a base of the two elongated dead bodies gives us hints to what might happen after this tensely captured moment. The base of what we see is lifeless, making us think that the only future that can happen is dark and full of despair. The composition is anchored by two pale figures at the bottom. These almost identically mirrored elements help to bring the painting together throughout this chaotic scene. By contrast, in the right pyramid, we see a glimmer of hope. Our eyes follow the rest of the passengers of the raft and up towards the man at the top, waving his maroon cloth, providing us with a sense of encouragement with clashes, which clashes with the pyramid of death on the left-hand side. The use of a red maroon draws our, our attention and radiates a strong and powerful focal point, convincing us there is hope, even when surrounded by an agitated and tormented scene. The painting is extremely dark, complementing the mood that we share with the men in the picture. He relies on gloomy browns, blacks, and greys to co convey the somber and overwhelming emotions within the picture. The brown helps to stabilize the composition, showing us that the figures within the distraction scene are only human, whereas the black is intimidating and forces the viewer back onto the raft and to feel that there is nothing that will save us. Jericho decides to mute the usual vibrancy of the sea and uses dark greens rather than a normal deep blue, which he has done to make sure that the viewer cannot see any form of solidarity and convince us there is no hope. Although we feel as if we are surrounded by darkness, there is a strong contrast of light within the main action. This energetic opposition between light and dark creates movement and drama within the picture. Along with the tonal contrast, Jericho has created a... a has created a swooping wave of light running from the dead figure in the bottom left to the living in the top right. This provides a commentary of what has happened over the 13 days of despair and destruction and accentuates the drama and the movement. This painting is dotted with individual stories. On the right is two men reaching up, grabbing onto anything they can grasp, fighting for their lives but one of the most distraught stories is the father and son. 
A gray-haired father clenches onto his pale and ragged dead son. His son's body limply hangs off the edge of the raft as his severed body lies to his right. He is engulfed in bodies and on the verge of being submerged by the ever-approaching waves. To their left lies another dead body, but this time with no one to hold them as they say their final goodbye. Sherico creates a juxtaposition between a dark but sweet moment of a father holding onto the, his son and a lonely man, after all of his struggle, has no one to hold him as he says his final goodbye in an overwhelming situation. These subtle juxtapositions help to make this painting, forcing us to subconsciously connect on each and every emotional level with each body that lies lifelessly on the raft. Though the father and son is a truly disturbing story, I see Jean Charles as the most horrid twist within the whole composition. We see him as the one to guide us, signaling to the faraway ship to save us while we lie on the floor in the depths of our sorrows. He holds on to the man behind him to take him with him, saying that he is his confidant, his ally, as he goes into battle against the hopelessness of the situation and to symbolize any tiny glimmer of hope that is left. Sherico carefully placed a sailing ship in the background, and although barely visible, the viewer can just about make it out when following the islands of some of the people on the raft. We are also guided by the setting sun striking against John Charles on John Charles' back and pointing our gaze towards the sailing ship. To the ordinary viewer, this can be seen as a sign of hope, though to, though to anyone that knows the true story of the Medus, it is a false ending to their torment. As much as they called out to the ship's attention, it sailed on by. Sherico chose the exact point at which all hope is lost, and any small sliver of hope they may have had is destroyed, leaving anyone who knows the story of the Medus in a never-ending cycle between hope and bereavement. For my A-level coursework project, I looked at the theme of death. Death is the one inevitability in life and has a unique meaning to each and every individual, which this painting perfectly explores. I looked at the many pathways, concepts, and interpretations that come with a dark subject. Throughout my project, the theme of death became more and more apparent with everything that I saw. I thought I had reached the pinnacle of what could be explored when finding out about my grandfather's death, but in the weeks after, and the various scenarios I found myself in, I felt that with every rock I unturned, there was more to be discovered. I was able to further connect with each different pathway that I went down, but when I came across this painting, nothing else could compare. Everyone has a story they can relate to in this. A father with his lost son, a man with no one to hold him, a group coming together to face the final battle, or a man fighting by himself with no one to help him. We all can see something in this painting of what we think of death what true distraught and what true emptiness feels like. Like Jean Charles, we are filled with hopelessness, which is why this painting is the epitome of death. Thank you. Hello, Berlin. Thank you very much uh, indeed for that. Um, I've got to ask you a question. I've got to ask a question of every speaker. Um, uh, as you look around the room, there's some fairly big pictures in this room here. Uh, you said you saw this in Paris. It's rather larger than what we're seeing on screen there. What was your impression seeing it for the first time in the gallery at the Louvre? Um, well, I, I did a lot of research beforehand, so I, I sort of knew what the scale would be like. And, but when you get there, it is... It's extremely like overwhelming, and it sort of, with the the people on it being life size, or if not bigger, it sort of draws you into it and makes you feel as if you're part of the painting. So I'd say the scale is the is one of the most important parts of the painting. Thank you so much. 